Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on one of my favorite things ever when I was a student, the Pythagorean Theorem. Our objective is, well, to use the Pythagorean Theorem. Let's start with our vocabulary startup. Now, a right triangle is a triangle with one right angle. The legs are the sides that form the right angle. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. So opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. It is the longest side of the triangle. So the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle. Now, we are going to go ahead and complete this graphic organizer. Label the legs and the hypotenuse. Well, the legs are the sides that form the right angle. And our right angle in this triangle is right there. So here's a leg. There's a leg. Everywhere a leg, leg. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. It is the longest side of the triangle. Well, here we have our hypotenuse. It is opposite the right angle. And if we were to measure these out, we would have side BC here as 6 centimeters. We would have side CA there as 8 centimeters. And we would have our hypotenuse AB as 10 centimeters. So it is indeed the longest side. Now, the Pythagorean theorem describes the relationship between the lengths of the legs and the hypotenuse for any and all right triangles. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a side of a right triangle when you know the other two sides. And the thing you'll hear over and over and over again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, as long as a and b are your legs, and C is your hypotenuse. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now our guided examples here, write an equation you could use to find the length of the missing side of each right triangle. Then find the missing length. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Now, as our little hint here indicates, this right angle, that's our 90 degree. And so our legs are formed around the 90 degree angle. And one thing I always do with right triangles is I label my A's, my B's for my legs. And it really doesn't matter what you call A, what you call B, but it does matter what you call your hypotenuse C. And so in our example here, we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Put in 12 for A, 9 for B, and it's important, so important, that you square these first. Order of operations tells us we need to do exponents first. We're not going to add first. We're not going to add first. So 12 squared is 144, 9 squared is 81. Then we add. So we end up with 225 equals C squared. Now, just like when you want to undo multiplication, you divide. If you want to undo addition, you subtract. Well, if you want to kind of do the opposite of squaring a number, the opposite of squaring a number is taking the square root of a number. When you do that, it's the whole plus and minus thing, because technically, you know, negative 5 squared is still a positive 25, just like 5 squared is. So Technically, we have the plus or minus written down, so C equals 15 or negative 15 because that's the square root of 225. However, we're dealing with distances here. We're dealing with sides of triangles, so it's really only going to be the positive answer. So our hypotenuse is 15 inches long. And you can see where they did our check step here, where they put in the numbers for A, B, and C and came out with both sides equaling 225. And our second guided example, what if one of the legs is missing instead of the hypotenuse? We are still going to solve the, the equation just the same. You're still going to substitute in a number for A, a number for B, and a number here for C. But the difference is we have 8 in for A. We keep B as B 
and then C is 24. You can see where they squared these. Now we need to solve this equation this time for B. So they subtracted 64 from both sides, got B squared is equal to 512. They took the square root and used a calculator, hint, hint, to come up with 22 and 6 tenths meters. Now, is it reasonable? Well, the leg, the hypotenuse needs to be the longest side. And so we should have a side that's under smaller than 24, and we do, um, and that's one thing you could always do to check. Let's try a few of these on our own now. Now, we're missing what side? We're missing the side that is opposite of the right angle, so we're missing the hypotenuse. So that means I can call one of these sides A, one of these sides B, and when I say sides there, these of course are our legs, and this opposite side is C. And so my Pythagorean theorem states that A squared plus B squared is going to equal C squared. And so if we put in 18 for A, we have 18 squared plus 24 squared is going to equal C squared. 18 squared, 18 times 18 is 324 plus... 24 squared is 24 times 24, or 576, equals c squared. And 324 plus 576 is 900, equals c squared. Now, we need to take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 900 is... 30. And technically, again, it's the plus or minus, but for this question, we'll just say it's a, the positive. So our answer is 30 yards. Let's try B. Now, we have a right triangle where the B is missing. So you can see where we have, next to the right angle, we have our two legs. So we're going to label those A, B, and then the hypotenuse is the one across opposite the right angle. So the 8 here is actually going to be our C. And so our Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals c squared. And make your substitutions in. a is 3 squared plus b squared equals 8 squared. Now one of the most common mistakes I see with the Pythagorean theorem is that we just put both numbers on the right side here and then take the square root. You need to pay attention to what two numbers you're given. If you're given one leg, the 3, and the hypotenuse, the 8, you need to solve it differently than if you're just given the two legs, like we were in example A. Now, 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9, plus our b squared equals 8 times 8 is 64. Now we need to solve this equation. We need to get our b squared alone, so we need to move this positive 9 over by subtracting the 9 from both sides of our equation. Cancels out, and we're left with b squared equals 55. And if we take the square root of both sides, we are left with b equals, and using our calculator, our calculator would say 7.416, so we'll just Round this to the nearest tenth at 7 and 4 tenths. So our answer here is 7 and 4 tenths miles, as MI is the abbreviation for miles. So again, notice how it was solved slightly differently than example A, since we were given a leg in the hypotenuse instead of two legs. And in C, what are we given? Well, we have our right angle here. 
And our two legs then would be 17 and A. And our hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, so that is 20. And so, once again, we can label this triangle A and B are the two legs, and C is the hypotenuse that is opposite the right angle. And so now, once again, our Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Our A this time, we don't know, so that's going to stay A squared. Plus, our B this time is 17, so 17 squared equals our C is 20, so 20 squared. And so, our A squared just stays A squared plus 17 squared is 17 times 17, which is 289, equals 20 squared, which is 400. Now to solve the equation, we can first subtract the 289 from both sides. This cancels out. We are left with a squared on the left side equals 111. Next, take the square root of both sides. The square root of a squared is simply a equals the square root of 111 is 10 and 5 tenths. So our answer, 10 and 5 tenths centimeters. Now we also have something called the converse of Pythagorean theorem. If the sides of a triangle have lengths a, b, and c, such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. Now, if you reverse the parts of the Pythagorean theorem, you have formed its converse. So, instead of saying if a triangle is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that's what we're saying with the Pythagorean theorem, we go and reverse the parts to make it the converse, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is also true. So we take the theorem, we reverse the two parts, and we're going to use that now to solve our last questions. In our guided example, the measures of three sides of a triangle are 5 inches, 12 inches, and 13 inches. Determine whether the triangle is a right triangle. So if we can prove that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, if that is true, then this is a right triangle. And as you notice, they substituted in the two smaller sides, 5 and 12, for a and b. Our largest side is always going to be our hypotenuse, so that's c. 5 squared was 25, 12 squared, 144, 13 squared, 169, 25 plus 144 is equal to 169, so 169 equals 169, and we have a right triangle. Now let's try that on our own here. We have in example D, 36, 48, and 60. So let's set up our Pythagorean theorem. We have A squared plus B squared and we're kind of asking ourselves, is this going to be c squared? Well, our a, let's just pick our smallest side for a for this one, is 36 squared plus b squared. We'll pick the next largest, b, or 48 squared, equals, now, the important thing, a and b, you can kind of switch around for these. But c has to be your hypotenuse, or what would be your hypotenuse, which is your largest number. So this has to be the larger of the four, three numbers, so it's 60. Now 36 squared is 1,296 plus 48 squared is 2,304 and 60 squared is 3,600. And now if 1,296 plus 2,304 
equal 3,600, we have a right triangle. And sure enough, those two numbers do add up to 3,600. And 3,600 is equal to 3,600. So, yes, we have a right triangle. Since 36 squared plus 48 squared does equal 60 squared. Now, our next one. We have 4, 7, and 5. Well, once again, we're going to have a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. Pick your two smallest sides for a and b. Those two are 4 and 5. Your largest one always has to be c. You always need to use your largest one for c. Now, 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. And 7 squared is 7 times 7, 49. 16 plus 25 is 41. Well, that's not equal to 49. So for this, we're going to say no, since 4 squared plus 5 squared it's an equal sign with a slash through it. That means not equal to 7 squared. So in D, we had a right triangle. In E, we did not have a right triangle. That is it for this lesson. Good luck.